Today, I'm exploring a beautiful little country that for 40 years was ruled by one of the world's most paranoid dictators. The most repressive and bloodiest regimes of contemporary history. Thousands of microphones were hidden across the country in order to detect any activity viewed as unlawful. Traces of this dark period are everywhere. Under strict communist rule for over 40 years and completely shut off from the rest of the world, this country's ruthless dictator, Enver Hoxha, built over 173,000 bunkers in preparation for a massive war that never came. But in just the past 30 years after Hoxha's death and the fall of communism, it's quickly been rebuilding itself into a vibrant, eager new country. And for the youth, the story of the bunkers we'll be diving into today is luckily nothing but a distant past. Welcome to Albania. I first heard about the Albanian bunkers when I came across an article of a guy who had remodeled one of these bunkers into his own personal tattoo shop. This sparked my initial curiosity towards the history of these bunkers. And the further I went down the rabbit hole of Albanian history, the more I was drawn to it. You see, after traveling to the Kurdish region of Iraq, Afghanistan, and Mauritania, I've become fascinated by countries with complicated pasts that often don't get great reputation in the media. I find that these have some of the most inspiring, beautiful, and much more nuanced stories out of anywhere else in the world. So as I was looking into contacts in Albania, a yesterday resubscriber Lena reached out to me on Instagram. She introduced me to her boyfriend who runs Drive Albania, a small tour group that offered to take me around the country for a full week. And to make this travel film happen, I brought my filmmaker friend Corey, that many of you are getting familiar with by now. I also invited one of my most recent new best friends, Nathaniel, from the channel Nathaniel Drew, who creates amazing content around seeking mental clarity. As we share a common thirst for travel and discovery, needless to say, we were excited to go on our first trip together. So without much of a plan, we got to Albania and the first stop of the trip would be to get tattooed in an ex-communist bunker. Hello. Welcome to Albania. And I believe that our special guest has just arrived. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> How are you doing, bro? Hey, good. good to meet you. Good to meet you. How are you doing? Hi. So good to meet you too. <laughs> Wait, what's our first stop of the trip? <laughs> so, because it's a bit outside Skodron of the city, we have to head off there first at the bunker, at the tattoo bunker, and <laughs> I guess get tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been responsible for too many people's first tattoos, yeah. and I feel terrible. <laughs> I feel like I feel like guilty about it. Hello. <laughs> You don't have any tattoos, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It's really hard to pressure me into something. I feel like I just don't. I don't like rushing stuff. What the f did I just do, man? This is so crazy. I can't believe that the first thing we're doing is a tattoo. It's literally 10 a.m. Yeah. I'm saying, you know? <laughs> 10 a.m. tattoo. Not enough alcohol in yeah. blood. Yeah. All right. The adventure officially begins. How far are we from the place? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Pick. Hurry up and pick. <laughs> hurry up and pick your first tattoo. Come on. Hurry up. Guys, welcome to Catch Marcus Tattoo Studio. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> you renovated. Oh my God. Holy. This is the coolest. <laughs> it just got real. <laughs> My heart's pounding a little bit. Yeah. Good to meet you, our tattoo artist. I have a yeah, I have a few. Okay, okay, good. good. Yeah. Why is that good? <laughs> you know, because you know that his reaction. You know. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have one. So. so we have to watch him out. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, you're cool. Yeah, I like you too, man. <laughs> you married? <laughs> I'm done. Jesus. What are we drinking right now? It's Rocky, yeah. Rocky? How yeah. strong is this? It's pretty strong. What time is it? It's like 11 a.m., right? This is a good time to drink 55% alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> 
Cheers. Cheers. Wish you guys the best. I hope. I see. I was looking real close. He didn't serve himself a ton, but I was like, bro, drinking and doing this, that's like, really? That's part of the package, I think. Like, that's, I think he looked at my design for a second. He was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, yes, three nation? Oh, so this tattoo is the tattoo of dawn, and it means breakthrough, like the start of a new, of a new phase. All right, first tattoo is done. <laughs> Damn, that looks awesome. <laughs> you know it, don't tell my mom. <laughs> Congratulations, first tattoo. Thank you very much, sir. What the f did I just do, man? This is so crazy. Dude, I've been in this country like not even 24 hours. That's uh, true. Kitch, thank you so much for starting our trip. All right, man, good luck, man. Good luck yeah. to the future, too. We're tatted up, now let's start the trip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, we've arrived at a lagoon, We're about to hop on this boat. We have an expert with us who is very well versed on the history of these bunkers and we're gonna try to ask him some questions while on this boat. Stop here? Yeah, she's gonna stop here and we, we look inside the bunker. Great. Mm. You know, this was uh, probably the most paranoid country in Europe. When it comes to a North Korean style of past, the bunkers were the symbol of it. Mm. Can you tell me a bit about why the bunkers were, were built in the first place? Their first construction started when Enver Hoxha decided to break with the USSR. He thought that, you know, like he needed a good amount of defense and that's when the bunkers start. In the end of the 70s, Albania used to spend 30% of its GDP on defense. My parents say that all we did is work for the bunkers, you know? At that time, you will be oppressed, you will lose your freedom, your prosperity, because that's what they told us all the time. Like, oh, you guys are very lucky because we're living in a prosperous economy and uh, we're building socialism and there's gonna be communism soon. We should be a society where you'd work as much as you could and you'd take as much as you needed. So, you know, like real paradise. But for sure they were lying to us. And the thing is that for most of us, there is no other way of information. Mm. They cut us from any kind of communication with the world. Thank God this has become history and uh, there is good lessons to learn from that. I believe that right now what I want especially Western Europeans to know is that if one day Albania will join the big European family, we will bring a beautiful, a few beautiful things like our nature, our mountains, our tradition, our food, you know, our energy. This is a young nation and there is need for that in Western Europe now. There's beautiful traditions from this country. There's beautiful lessons to be learned from this country. Thank you so much, Tony. Oh. What my dream is since many, many years now is to be able to one day convert these into into rooms, you know, hotel. Because I know that there is a big market for unusual stays and unusual hotels, and you know, how cool it would be to spend the night in here. Everywhere you go, even on relatively new and modern kind of built out places, you find these bunkers hidden a little bit everywhere. As communism came to an end in Albania, the 173,000 bunkers suddenly became abandoned. We're arriving at the coast. One, two, three. Four bunkers right there. Three right there. It's just so crazy. And such a beautiful place. Has had such a troublesome past. Oh, oh my god. This is way more intense than I thought. You just said, oh, the big guns were in here, but this was a cannon that was this size. You're small compared to... tiny. During communism, though, the average of these bunkers would have every day there would be a soldier holding guard. Even if there was no real threat, the ex-dictator was so paranoid, he would hold every bunker active constantly, all the time. Most of these bunkers were built on public land, but some 
ended up on private, like these four, and are now up to the owners of the land to decide what to do with them. How are you? How are you? So good, good to meet you. Hello. Don't speak it. Speak Italian? No. Italian? No. Non parla you speak Italian? Italian? Si, parlo Italian. Tu parli Italian? Okay. Allora possiamo capirci. Che dici? Da dove sei? Io qua albanese, però sono vissuto in Italia vent'anni. Ah, ok. Eh, qualcosa dentro, però rimane sempre una storia che non, okay. non lo puoi cancellare, no? Quindi preferisci non toccare no, questo? No, meglio di no. Perché nel futuro i ragazzi quando vedono queste cose c'è stata una bella cavolata. Non un niente. pezzo della storia? Certo. Questo non è qualcosa che ho visto io nella no, mia vita. Ma come hai visto? Tu non, so, è... non avete vissuto il comunismo voi, il comunismo è troppo, troppo brutto. Sì, la sì. povertà perché nel tempo del comunismo ma anche queste parole non potevamo parlare insieme perché ci mettevano subito in galera sì. quindi secondo te questo momento della storia dopo tutto ciò che è successo nel passato sì. le, le cose vanno meglio adesso? Sì. Sì, sicuramente è meglio oh, amazing I think I understood that no, ma grazie bellissimo grazie ah, grazie amico mio. grazie mille se volete il caffè io sto al locale là oh my god I love this guy He's so cool Right now we're standing on top of four massive bunkers. And now, you know, kind of realizing that every single local here has very mixed feelings about them. Oof, yeah. Some don't want you to talk about them. Some people want you to talk about them. Yeah. Some people want them to be reused. Some people want them to be destroyed. It seems to be like a, something people are just sick of hearing about. Yeah. And some people are like, let's, we have to keep them because this is our reminder to never do this again. This country was dealt like a really shitty hand. Yeah. We were being told last night at dinner is like the people here have had to build a lot of like thick skin. Yeah, traditions that keep them that keep them linked together. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Ah, oh, don't do this, man. Don't do this. I'm so bad at heights. Are you all right? I'm really bad at heights. So I would try to turn around so that you're like spin your body around completely. Like come with your legs like back like backwards like that. Yeah. Chic. You'll be okay. Down to that one, down there. You're good, you're good. Yeah, you can hold here, hold here. Yes, there you go. There you go. Okay. Boom, you did it. Oh man. Did you film that whole thing? You. No! It's so embarrassing. I appreciate that though. Thank he got you. down. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. <laughs> That's such a <laughs> with height. Oh my god. I don't know what my deal is yeah you're good i have a feeling like in the back of your mind you're no, like no 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 let's get it. him skydiving or something like oh yeah <laughs> just, I'm definitely no 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 no, no. we're gonna do <laughs> we're off-roading right now <laughs> what are we doing <laughs> very remote villages to check out what that looks like so what's the deal with no seat belt oh this cliff we're all gonna die anyway we'll all air jordan our way to our deaths They ran out of coffee at the coffee shop, so he's just taking us to his house and he's offering us to just make us his own coffee and then he's just walking. You're kidding me. And everyone is so friendly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How do you know this guy? I don't. Oh. You've never met him? No. Dude, what? Hey, so we don't know these people. No. Nobody knows anyone here. They're just inviting us. Oh my god. They didn't even hesitate. They didn't think about it. They're just like, yeah, yeah, come on. Right, right. How you doing, man? Yeah. Ram <laughs> Rahati. He's asking, like, you guys are always welcome. The door is open. Oh my God. Zoom. Cheers. Cheers. Look, that's you. <laughs> that's your side. Look. Your side. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. A new photographer is going to be born in this village. We handed her my camera. Do you have a fushash? Pia shage. Scooby Doo. Oh. Jansi shage. I'm shaggy from Scooby Doo. <laughs> I, um, I definitely need a haircut. I wish I had a, a camera I could give her. Put your hands under it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Kiosh Bad Booker. She said this one's the best. And there's Hi. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh my oh. god. Oh my gosh. 
Bye, Shaggy. Bye, Shaggy. Yeah. Oh my God. Goodbye. Oh, she wants another hug. Oh. <laughs> that was the. We just experienced. That was the sweetest uh, moment I've ever experienced. Um, she just hugged you like eight times. And I'm officially Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Did, did you see the willingness that they had to share everything? They were just like, take our alcohol, take our coffees, take our Turkish delight. It's like wow. normal. Albanian hospitality is like really important. It's the reason why I travel, man. Yeah. Moments like that. We need to get somehow the address of this village. And I, like, I will ship. I don't know if Amazon ships here. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know my name. She thinks I'm Shaggy. Dude, this we is had the, the dog. We had the dog too. Oh my god, the dog. <laughs> The dog and the mystery van, or whatever it's called, the mystery yeah, bus. Yeah, we have the van! Oh I'm wearing the green t-shirt. You're right! Oh, oh f That's totally what I mean. What if I'd been completely wrong about this place? Initially thinking our trip would be limited to exploring these abandoned bunkers, we were starting to feel energized by realizing how much more there truly was to explore in Albania. We have been staying at this beautiful hotel whose entire mentality is to blend the old with the new. This is one uh, old political pr prison. We have uh, something uh, 400 family bring the food here so to make an economy for the family. This mm. is the idea. It's so important to, to take the images of, of, the, of the farm, of the countries, of the village and to make new for the young generations. Yeah. This is one good uh, step uh, to, to invite the young generations to come back. The room of the cheese. What? Wow. Uh, How long do you keep the cheeses in here? 60 days, sorry. 60 days? Yes, two months. They have hundreds of geese and they're all walking in unison and we have about 10 seconds before the geese are gonna roll up on us. And then I realized it was a goose and not a duck, dude! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One of them just laid an egg. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my gosh. After a very random yet eventful encounter with hundreds of geese, we were arriving at the bittersweet end of our trip, where on our last stop, we rewinded the clock 2,500 years at the castle of Berat. Only to realize that these bunkers were only the most recent trace of Albania's heavy history. The castle, having been conquered by the Romans and then the Ottomans, is now standing as a representation of what Albania has gone through for thousands of years. That despite continuous war and oppression, the Albanian people have held each other together through traditions and culture that have outlived it all. You'll see the church, yeah. Greek Orthodox Church, and the mosque, and the entrances are facing to each other. That is completely on, on purpose. And the square between them is called the square of friendship. That means so after the prayers, in the evening, everybody to their own religion, they come out and, and hang around and, and socialize together. It was very, very important and every uh, house of God is going to be close to each other to serve the purpose of not, not dividing the country using religion. Top. The 
this all started with a text where you go, hey dude, you down to get tattooed in an ex-communist bunker? I was like, I'll consider it. <laughs> Albania was not at all what we were expecting. A country that I'd initially been drawn to for the history of its bunkers, I quickly realized had been short-sighted of me. As we explored its castles, diverse landscape, and met its people, we were amazed to find so much more. 30 years have passed since the fall of communism in this country. And after a few decades of struggling to recover from it, they are growing day by day as a young and ambitious nation, ready to share their beautiful culture with the rest of the world. As for the future of these bunkers, I think that's obviously for the Albanians themselves to decide. But I believe that reinventing and reclaiming the past to transform it into something new, as Tony had suggested, can have the two-sided advantage of remembering the past while taking ownership of it to create a new future. Making travel films like this one and taking you around the globe alongside me to expand our shared understanding of the world is truly my life's dream. I want to plant the seed of curiosity for culture the way that Bourdain did in previous generations, and I feel immensely grateful for this opportunity here today. Because no matter how much you hear about a country in the news or in pop culture, you can't properly judge it until you visit. And so, my friends, here's to many more adventures to come, and of course, to seeking discomfort. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. And before we go, we have an amazing surprise where we've partnered with Omaze, where you can enter a chance to win an electric Tesla powered Porsche. That is right here. Can I open my eyes? Open your eyes. That's the car. Dude, no way. Yeah. Are you serious? You're Isn't like it cool? Oh my God, dude. Oh my, I dude, I love you so much. Oh my God, dude, this is amazing. Right. <laughs> Eric, people can enter for a chance to win this car. It's not, dude, it's not for you. Thank you so much. I don't think you understand. This one-of-a-kind Tesla-powered 1969 Porsche 912 is definitely one of the most unique cars I have ever driven. On the outside, it looks like a vintage 1969 Porsche 912, but under the hood is completely modernized. It has a fully electric 300 horsepower Tesla motor that goes zero to 60 in just 5.5 seconds, which we immediately experienced when taking it for a spin. That's crazy. Dude, I can't believe it. Someone in our audience is getting this car, not you. So for your chance to win a Zelectric Porsche 912e, go to amaze.com slash yes theory and enter now. The best part is that every donation supports the work of the Peterson Automotive Museum, which is a nonprofit organization specializing in automobile history and related educational programs. So hurry up, that's amaze.com slash yes theory. Go there and donate and good luck. Hopefully you'll be the one winning this beautiful car. Hey, hey. That's my car! I just won that! Give me back my car! He's a freaking liar! These YouTubers are all freaking liars!